All right, guys, BLM here, back with a new video. In this video, I will be ranking all of the double slash triple evictions in Big Brother Canada history. Now, I did debate on whether or not I should include instant evictions as well. Kind of decided to leave them out as they don't take place over the course of one episode. However, did decide to include triple evictions as obviously they follow a similar format to the double eviction. So here we go. So as of my count, there are 13 double slash triple evictions up to this point which I am doing this before BB count eight. So because there's only 13, we might as well run through all of them. So let's get started with number 13. So number 13, the worst tr double slash triple eviction in the history of Big Brother Canada to me is the Liza eviction from BB Can 1. I mean, there's just literally no intrigue here. I mean, Tom goes in part one. That one's somewhat interesting. But by the time Tom goes, there's literally no intrigue left. We get the HOH competition, which is the knockout comp, which means Liza as the very clear person on the outs here has absolutely no shot of winning that unless she wins out on every question which she obviously doesn't. Then we get to the veto competition, which once you see it, you like instantly know, well, Liza's probably not winning this. And once Liza doesn't win the veto, it's very obvious she goes home. There's really no intrigue here. It's really one of the worst double evictions in the history of Big Brother. Now we're number 12, we have a pretty recent double eviction and that is the Eddie double eviction from BB Can 7. And again, there's really just no intrigue here. Now there's slightly a bit more than the Liza one where coming into this double eviction, once Adam wins HOH, you can pretty much tell that his target's pretty much gonna be Kiki, but Kiki wins Veto, and that leaves Eddie as the only other option and he does end up going home. Really again, not that much intrigue here, as even if Kiki did end up going home, it's just another person that's very high on the pecking order anyway. So after Adam wins HOH, there's really no potential for this being a good double eviction. So it ranks here at number 12. Now in number 11, I have another pretty boring double eviction and that is the Kenny eviction from BB Can 2. And again, this one's pretty straightforward. I mean, once someone outside of Kenny, Rochelle, or Sabrina win HOH, it's very clear that Kenny is going to get backdoored. And that is what ends up happening. However, I do think this one has a bit more fun to it. I do think the HOH competition here was pretty fun, where Netta wins by accident. We also have the veto ceremony where Arlie fakes out everyone into making them think that he's not going to use the veto, which is a pretty fun moment. But overall, again, the result's still the same. Kenny goes home. Not super interesting, so it's here at number 11. Now at number 10, we're still into somewhat uninteresting double evictions. We're about to get into some good ones, but at number 10, we do have the Polar double eviction from BB Can 3. Again, another pretty straightforward one where once Ashley or Polar don't win HOH, you know they're going on the block. And then once Ashley wins Veto, there's really no option but for Polar to go home. It is pretty interesting though that Polar was obviously like the biggest pawn in the game at this point. Like she was someone who wasn't even playing that hard. The fact that she ends up getting taken out over Godfrey is a pretty Pretty funny visual there. But outside of that, again, pretty standard. Not really much intrigue here. At number nine, I have the Topaz eviction from BB Can 1. And again, this is a pretty by the numbers one. Once Emmett wins HOH, you know Topaz is going home unless some weird stuff happens with the veto. And weird stuff almost happens with the veto, which is why this is as high as it is. I mean, once Peter wins the veto, like I remember being excited watching this live, like thinking, oh my God, Peter's gonna use the veto, gonna save Topaz, they're gonna send out Andrew. And then next week, Peter and Topaz are gonna be teaming up to take out Emmett and Jillian. And uh, nope. Emmett convinces Peter not to use the veto and Topaz ends up going home. Pretty anticlimactic, really not much to say here. But again, there was a little bit of interest there. So it's here at number nine. And number eight, I have another double eviction from BB Can 7, and that is the Damien eviction, which is another pretty straightforward one in the sense that Damien was the clear target, Damien goes home. However, I do feel like there was some like personal intrigue here where Damien is completely blindsided the entire double eviction. And while it is like kind of brutal to see how shocked he is when he gets evicted, and then you see him being confused as he hugs everyone on his way out, I do find that kind of memorable. But overall, again, not a great double eviction, but for just Damien's reactions to things, it really does stick out in my mind. Now at number seven, we have the first triple eviction to make the list, and that is from BB Can 6, the Johnny and Olivia boot, which I remember being so frustrated at this triple eviction. Again, I am someone who did not agree with Paris's move to get rid of Allie. 
And then for Derek to win HOH, and then Kayla to win Vito, and then they take out Johnny and Olivia, who are pretty much their biggest competition at this point. I remember being really frustrated there, but at the same time, it does have some fun moments. I do like the way that Johnny and Olivia exit the house. I also feel like this was like kind of the deciding moment of the season, pretty much like this is the climax of the season, in my opinion, where from this point, everything starts to slow down a bit. But everything had been leading up to this triple eviction on this season where like everyone had been planning so far ahead for this triple eviction to make sure they were on everyone's good side. But yeah, overall, triple eviction here ranks at number seven. At number six, I have another triple eviction as the triple eviction from BB Can 5 where Dre and William go home, the French connection. And this is a fun one to a degree. There are definitely a lot more fun moments in this one than the BB Can 6 one. I think the fact that Kevin wins Vito redeeming himself from the triple eviction of BB Can 3, I think that's a fantastic moment, especially considering he does end up going on to win the game. You have some arguing here of Dre freaking out as she knows her game's over after Jack he ends up going home. You have Kevin actively voting out William. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a decent triple eviction. Again, no like mind-blowingly great moment here, but some like pretty solid moments with obviously the Kevin moment really sticking out to my mind. So here, ranks here at number six. So now we're at number five where we're starting to get into the pretty good triple evictions. I think at number five here, we have BB Can't Six. We have the Hamza boot. I feel like this and the next entry are very similar double evictions where we come into this with a very generic set of nominations. But after Vito, someone gets backdoored and that backdoor target is a pretty big player. And here we have Ryan winning the Vito, saving himself and Olivia ends up putting up Hamza, taking out Hamza, who is a pretty strong player in this season. I mean, again, not a great player overall, but definitely a major factor in how the game was being played out up to this point. And we have a lot of conversations going on after Vito as well, where Johnny is the one that's able to convince Olivia to take out Hamza, which goes against what Erica wants, who was Johnny's closest ally. And this being a great display of Johnny's influence over the game, which hadn't been shown too much on the show up to this point. And you have people crying and everything when Hamza goes. Even Olivia doesn't even want to put Hamza up. I do think it's a good double eviction, but I feel like the next one is a step above it. So here at number four, we have the double eviction from BB Can 4. We have the Levita eviction, which is a very similar thing. And initial nominations are pretty boring. Maddie is the HOH. Nick and Phil win the veto. Maddie tells Nick and Phil to use the veto so that she can put Levita on the block who was Maddie's ally at that time. At this point in the game, there were still two sides with Maddie, Ramsey, and Dallas on one side, and then Jared and Raul on the other side with the mighty middle still in place. And Levita was someone that was leaning towards the Maddie side. So for Maddie to go and actively target Levita is just dumb. And she ends up doing it, taking out Levita, who was a strong player. Not, again, not a good player, but someone who had won two HOHs up to this point. Someone that was initially on the outs, but someone who was starting to build bonds with some of the people in the mighty middle. But she gets sniped out here, and I think it's a pretty fun double eviction. Again, for Maddie to make a move that's completely against her best interest is really fun. And we still also have the shocking sort of backdoor that we got from the Hamza double eviction as well. So I think this one is worthy of rating here at number four. Now at number three, we have the other double eviction from BB Can 4. We have the Nikki eviction, which is a really fun one. I think this top three is a tier of its own. It's There are fantastic, like all-time great double slash triple evictions. And this Nikki one's fantastic. I mean, we started off with the Pax Bros winning HOH, put up Tim and Nikki, and they make a deal with Cassandra so that Cassandra won't use the veto on Tim, who was obviously one of her closest allies. So Cassandra wins the veto, obviously. And guess what? She uses the veto on Tim and that pisses off the Pax Bros. We get this entire sequence where they want to nominate themselves, which is really fun. Obviously, it's against the rules to begin with. And also, just Arissa didn't even know what to do, it didn't seem like. So instead, they do end up deciding to put up Joel, who is really the only other option. And the fact that Nikki gets taken out here is, again, it's kind of similar to the Pilar double eviction, where it's someone who really shouldn't be getting voted out. I'm mean, considering... This is like the easy final two goat to take to the end, but Nikki goes home here. Overall, it's a lot of fun. It's really iconic to me with the Cassandra lie and her pulling off Tim. It's a great one. It lands here at number three. Now at number two, and the top two I think are pretty much like universally agreed on, I would think. I think just the order is a bit different, and I know everyone puts this one that I have at number two at number one. But for me, number two is the double eviction from BB Can 5. We have the Netta eviction. It's very similar to the Hamza and Levita double evictions, 
but on a much grander scale. Where here we have Cindy winning HOH. She puts up Jackie and Dylan. Jackie ends up winning the veto, and at this point, Cindy needs to put up a replacement. And we have Ika going to Cindy and convincing her to put up Netta. And obviously up to this point, Netta had been the biggest player in the entire season. She's been running the show. She was someone who had immunity all the way up until this point due to a twist that Canada gave her. However, at the same time, Netta is able to suss out that Aika is doing this. So we start getting a whole bunch of arguments between Netta and Aika, Netta and Dimitri. It's a, so much fun. I mean, some of the best fights in the history of Big Brother Canada. And at the same time, we have Bruno and Kevin trying to convince Cindy not to put up Netta. Even to the point where Cindy has to make her decision. They're going down the stairs to get to the living room. And Bruno is still telling her not to do it. And then Cindy's an idiot and then puts up Netta, which completely blows up her game. She ends up going home the next week. She loses the numbers. She has no allies after this. It's really a terrible move in every single possible way for Cindy. But it's a great move from Aika. It has a lot of drama here. We get Netta being evicted. It probably is the best double eviction in the history of Big Brother. It lands here at number two. Now at number one, the number one double slash triple eviction. And if you're wondering why I keep on saying double slash triple is because number one is a triple eviction. It is actually the first triple eviction, the triple eviction from BB Cam 3, where Kevin and Willow go home. And this is just such a spectacular series of events. Like, it's such an amazing triple eviction, every single aspect. We start off with Brittany, one of the underdogs, winning HOH here. She learns that's a triple eviction. She has to put up three people for the first time in Big Brother Canada history. She puts up Zach, Kevin, and Pilar. With Zach and Kevin obviously as their targets, two of the biggest guys in the house, two of the biggest targets in the house. We get to the veto competition. Bruno wins the veto. Bruno's someone who's supposed to be aligned with the like Sarah and Brittany's of the world. And immediately he has to make a decision, which is something that I find really strange about Big Brother Canada, that they make them immediately go to the veto ceremony after winning the veto. But Bruno comes into the room, he gets up, and he just uses the veto on Zach, which is such a mind-blowing moment. It's one of my favorite moments in the history of Big Brother. He uses the veto on someone who was actively targeting him not too long ago, someone that is kind of a rival of him within the game. He uses the veto to save him, one to garner trust with him, but also to keep a massive target in the game that if, well, if Sarah hadn't played emotionally, would have worked to his benefit in the next round, even though obviously Bruno does end up going home due to twists and also Sarah and Brittany playing emotionally. But it is a very masterful move that could have been one of the best moves in the history of Big Brother Canada. He uses the veto on Zach and you're thinking, okay, replacement nominee is going to be Ashley. Now the boot is going to be Ashley and Kevin. But nope, Brittany decides to put up Willow, who is someone that is kind of aligned with her, not really, but Willow is someone that is very close to Sarah, who is Brittany's closest ally, but at the same time, that is also why Brittany does put up Willow, as after Willow goes, it makes Sarah have to be loyal to Brittany, and because of this, we get Willow, Kevin, and Pilar on the block. However, the votes are technically still there for Willow to stay. However, Sarah, for some reason, is very worried about an all-guys alliance. I guess because, obviously, Bruno just used the veto on Zach. But this causes Sarah to try to keep Pilar? Because she thinks Pilar has more of a chance to stay out of the women. Which, again, is just a complete wrong read on the game. Because, obviously, Bruno and Zach end up voting to keep Willow. Meaning that if Sarah had voted to keep Willow as well, Willow would have stayed. So essentially, Sarah accidentally votes out one of her closest allies in the entire game. Which is such an amazing capper to this triple eviction. We also have Willow sobbing on her way out as well. It's such a fantastic one. It really is. Like, all around, there's never a slow moment this entire time. It's really just one of the all-time greatest rounds of any reality show ever. I mean, it's just constant beat after beat after beat. So for me here, it easily ranks here at number one. So there we go. Those are my rankings of the Big Brother Canada double slash triple evictions. Pretty top heavy list here, but one I thought that would be fun to make. Nonetheless, obviously Ray did a US version of the video. Might as well do a Canada version as well. So that's the video. That's pretty much everything I gotta say about these double slash triple evictions. Thank you for watching.